Hey there, folks. Today I'm gonna to cover a trio of box sets that I recently picked up. Um, one of them is not Tom Petty's Wildflowers box set, which everybody is talking about and unboxing and doing all sorts of fun stuff with. Um, mine is on the way, little bit disappointing given that I ordered it right when it was announced from Tom Petty's website. Um, and it's not arriving till it's supposed to get in tomorrow. So four days post-release. Uh, I went to my local record store over the weekend, not to pick up a second copy, um, to pick up some of the stuff I'll show here. And they were sold out of everything, except for the CDs. Um, I don't know how many they had, but it sounds like this thing is very, very popular. Uh, so I'm looking forward to mine coming tomorrow. Uh, hopefully it comes tomorrow. Um, and uh, we'll probably talk about that on the next uh, video. But here I've got three new box sets that I want to cover, vinyl box sets that I received, plus a couple of additional new records, and then of course close it out with a record I wish more people knew about. Uh, so to start, the one that I'm most excited about is the new Replacements box set, uh, the Please to Meet Me set. There's the back. Uh, Replacements, one of my favorite bands from the 80s, um, just a spectacular band. There's a, a vinyl record plus three CDs of all sorts of stuff. I actually read through most of this insert last night, which includes, uh, which is really good. It includes uh, a bunch of interviews with Paul Westerberg. Um, or, or a, an, an interview with Paul Westerberg. Tommy Stinson is interviewed as well. Uh, it's just some really, really great stuff. A lot of stuff that I did not know uh, about this period. This is the period when Bob Stinson <clears throat> um, was pushed out of the band. It looks like it was right prior to recording of this record. Um, there's a great shot. I think that's Keith Richards. Uh, with uh, a picture of Alex Chilton. There's so many great sh photos in here. Um, and uh, Jim Dickinson, who ended up, I believe, producing the record. Is that right? I think so. Um, he's all over this as well. Uh, but just uh, the, the interview, again, I read probably a third of it last night. It was fantastic, and I can't wait to read the rest. Uh, hopefully tonight. A great shot of Tommy Stinson with his Hoboken Maxwell's t-shirt on. Uh, I, I haven't listened to this yet, but I'm very excited to listen to it. Here's some awesome shots of Paul Westerberg and Alex Chilton. I don't know where this is. Maxwell's maybe in Hoboken? Seems like there's a little Maxwell's theme here. Uh, <laughs> gotta love Westerberg. Uh, shaking hands with, I don't know, who, some label execs or something. Um, this shot of Paul doing what he does, Tommy, Chris Mars, and is it Slim Dunlap? Yeah. Uh, so just a lot of content here. It came with a lot of stuff. So this was on the insert, uh, or when I first opened it. Then an interview with Paul Westerberg on cassette. I don't have a cassette player and I don't plan on getting one. So I don't know that I'm gonna hear this. Uh, as of yet, I'm not jumping on the cassette bandwagon. Vinyl, CDs, and digital rounds it out for me. But I don't know, I kinda wanna hear this. Uh, tote bag, gotta have the replacements tote bag. Don't have to, but now I have one. Uh, bumper sticker. There is also, hold on one second, there is a t shirt. Found that a lot faster than I thought I would. Uh, a pleased to meet me t shirt. Looks pretty cool. Looks like it's going to fit me. So couldn't be happier 
I think this is Rhino again. Uh, this is uh, just a, a fantastic box set. Again, I haven't listened to it, but the contents of it are really, really great. Uh, talked about all over uh, YouTube, this John Lennon uh, Give Me Some Truth collection. I got the vinyl version. Uh, I've listened to almost all of it. I really like it. Um, our friend Mazzy does, does a, a, a big video or a longer video uh, on this. Um, I agree with him on the artwork. I think it's fantastic. Um, and I'm really excited to listen to this some more. This came with a lot of stuff. Poster, some insert stuff. A uh, couple of postcards, which you can mail to friends and family, which I will never do. Not that I like, don't like selling postcards. Actually, I do like sending postcards, but I always keep this stuff intact. And another bumper sticker. You got all sorts of options on the bumper sticker front. Um, so that is the John Lennon box set. Now, latest one. This was limited to 500 copies, I believe. It's from a band that I really loved during the 2000s. I have not followed them as much as I uh, did back then. So I'm, a bunch of times, the one time I went to Coachella in 2009, they were on the bill. Uh, the last, again, the last few records have sort of, uh, I, I tried one a couple of years ago, didn't, didn't wasn't, wasn't hitting me like the earlier stuff, so sort of faded. But I heard about this box set, a live set, two decades of Ockerville River Live. Um, so I only listened to the first record, both sides, and frankly was a little bit disappointed. A lot of chatter, a lot of sort of just um, wanted to hear some music, and there was uh, not enough of that. That said, if I'm looking at LP2, which has a lot of my favorite songs of theirs, A Stone, Lost Coastlines, uh, our life is not a movie or maybe unless it's kicks those are my favorite favorite songs so i'm gonna give this uh, more time uh so i'll report back on if i um sort of found some some nuggets on this but again this is the ockerville river artwork's a little bit not my favorite um a lot of blazing colors uh but Here's a, a better in, inside area, inside area. Um, so let's see where this one lands, but uh, thus far, uh, let's just say I need some more time. Let's move these away. Uh, next one I picked up on Discogs, I think. And this is the Gene Clark record. Uh, no other. I first heard this in my local record store uh, about four or five months ago, somewhere around there. I don't know when this reissue came out, 2019, I think. Um, and I heard for the first time ever the song Life's Greatest Fool, and I shazammed it, figured out what it was, put it on my list of records to buy, and I finally got around to doing that. Uh, so I am really excited to listen to this Gene Clark record. I haven't opened it yet. Uh, next, an artist that I found on YouTube, think it's pronounced Biabadubi. Um, I believe she's a Filipino artist who lives in London. Uh, I think this is her first record. Uh, I found her because I was searching, I think it was pavement related, and she, I believe, has a song called I Wish I Was Stephen Malkmus. Um, and she's a big pavement 90s indie rock fan, as am I. Uh, but she's young, early 20s. Um, and it very much feels like a 90s, what I've heard thus far. She has a song called Care, which is the first one, which I saw a video for that. Um, and it feels very much like a sort of 90s indie rock band. I can't yet say what I think about this record because I've only heard that one song. But I'm trying to buy more and more records that I normally would probably pass on. So getting a little bit out of my zone, getting into or discovering more 
current stuff. So I'll get back to you on that one. Um, I think I've mentioned how much I love the version of Justin Townsero covering Paul Simon's Graceland. Uh, there is a black and white video, I can't remember who the host is, uh, on YouTube where Justin Townsend is either in a kitchen or a bathroom. It is just a gorgeous, gorgeous uh, version of that song. He put it out on a 7-inch, which is very, it's not that hard to find, it's very expensive. I was on a couple of eBay um, auctions for it and it just got too high. Um, Excuse me. So, but I did go out and buy Paul Simon's Graceland. Um, I've been listening to a lot of Paul Simon uh, lately. Kodachrome, can't stop listening to that song. Uh, there's a great cover by Connor Oberst of Kodachrome. Highly recommend. It's like a full rock band cover. It's great. Um, but Paul Simon's Graceland, I just got this on Saturday. Looking forward to giving it a spin. This looks like it's a reissue. 180 gram vinyl. Pumped for that. Uh, at the same, on the same trip, these next two records are from that trip. I found this in a used bin, uh, the Faces Ooh La La. Uh, I love the Faces. And this has um, Glad and Sorry, which I love. Ooh La La, of course. Um, I have a Faces box set on CD, but I think this, no, this is, I think the second Faces vinyl record I own. Um, but I am really looking forward to spinning this. There's some funky jacket stuff going on here. I don't even know yet how it all works, but I remember, yeah, there's a little bit of that going on. Um, uh, well, it's just all over the place. Uh, I'll get back to you on how this magic works, but, uh, I am very excited to give this a listen. I love the faces. Wow, this is complicated. Um, oh, it opens like that, like that. I'm gonna get back to this another time. Um, that's the faces. And then a record I've been very much looking forward to is the new Kevin Morby record, Sundowner. It's getting pretty good reviews. Uh, Kevin Morby is one of my favorite current singer-songwriters. I think he's in his early 30s, uh, lives in Kansas. Um, uh, and this is a record I'm very excited about. I've heard the song Campfire and I've heard Valley. Uh, so I will spin this this week and report back. Kevin Morby. Now a record that I wish more people knew. Um, this is probably not a new artist to many folks, but uh, it's a perfect album. I know I say that a lot, um, but it really is. It's, I would say, next to uh, The Meadowlands by The Wrens, which I mentioned recently, which is my, probably my favorite record of the last 20 years. Uh, this is probably number two, uh, although the Purple Mountains record that came out recently is in there. Jason Isbell's Southeastern is in there, but this, Josh Ritter's The Historical Conquests of Josh Ritter um, came out in 2007. This was Josh Ritter at his peak. Every song on here is great. Uh, right Moves, Mind's Eye, Temptation of Adam, it's pretty relevant to today. Uh, Rumors, uh, Next to the Last Romantic, Still Beating, Empty Hearts, Wait for Five Stars. Pitchfork rating, 10. Uh, this album should be known by everybody who likes singer-songwriters, and um, it's also got a very big full band feel to it. A tremendous, tremendous record. Uh, that's it, although I do want to note um, that a few days ago was the 40-year anniversary of Bruce Springsteen's The River. This is the reissue that came out a few years ago when Bruce went on tour. Uh, in support of the river. Um, that was my favorite Springsteen tour uh, in 2016. Um, I've seen Bruce dating back to the first time I saw him in 1985. So 85, 95, 05, that's 31 years. Um, 
and I've seen him probably close to 100 times. I don't, I don't know if that embellished that or not. Maybe it's 50, maybe it's 80. Probably no less than 50 or 45. Uh, but my favorite tour was the River Tour. It's the tightest I think I've ever heard the band. Uh, I saw them uh, at the Forum, and I think it's the Forum, the place that closed in LA. I think the Bruce Show was the last uh, concert there, whatever this venue was called. Um, Sports Arena, LA Sports Arena. Uh, and then I saw them um, overseas in Norway uh, twice on this tour. The River, I could do a whole video on the river and I probably will at some point, it changed my life. I was six or seven years old when it came out. Um, and I remember it being played throughout our household all the time. My dad loved this record. Point Blank, Independence Day, The Price You Pay, The River, Wreck on the Highway, Drive All Night, um, just uh, Jackson Cage, Hungry Heart was a big hit. Um, this. On, a, on the right day, could be my favorite record of all time. Although it's usually Darkness, The Edge of Town. But Bruce Springsteen's The River, 40 years old. Um, and I hear he's got a new record on the way next week. This week? This week, Friday it comes out, I think, October 23rd. That's all for now. My Yankees are out. Congrats to the Dodgers and Rays fan. I think it's going to be a fantastic World Series, and I will talk to you soon.